You ever want to get a bit swifty? Have you ever wanted to just be the cause of disrupting the flow of a session by pointing at a wall, shooting a portal onto it, then jumping through it? Your GM's plans be damned? Okay, okay. That might be going a bit overboard, but you get the idea. It's time to find out how exactly to get your Rick and Morty on. And away we go! Dun 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 dun! B Sides! Hello, and welcome to Pathfinder B Sides. I am your host, Professor Phoenix, and today we will be going over the Gunslinger archetype, the Planar Rifter. From the book Plane Hopper's Handbook, which came out in 2018, this archetype came out to not a lot of fanfare. I've spent about 20 minutes going over Google at the time of writing this script, and legit there are no badass stories of players having played this archetype up to level 20, 10, or even level 5. It's been mentioned a few times as a possible dip. Using Path Builder, a sweet app by the way that lets you build your character ideas out, fleshing them out all the way to level 20, it's on the Google Play Store, yeah? Uh, it, it shows that there are two uses of this archetype out there. This is out of over 100,000 downloads. I'm just saying there should be more than at least two people out there who have used this archetype. I'm sorry. I'm ranting again. When all you really want me to do is go on about how badass this plane jumping archetype is. Now, I would usually say that the flavor text is from the D20 PFSRD, but this time it's not. The archetype is Paizo, so, you know, first party, and its information is freely available at the D20 PFSRD, but the flavor text was a bit harder to find. Uh, I bought the book, Plane Hopper's Handbook, right on, yeah, yeah, and on page six, this is the available flavor text. And unfortunately, I'm not going to post this uh, visibly. So just listen to the luxurious sound of my voice, followers of the demonic harbinger Sixeron, invented a method of harvesting pieces from Abaddon, absorbing some of the energy into themselves and condensing other portions of it into bullets they could fire from their guns. While these methods originated among Sixeron's followers, they have spread among a few other seasoned planar travelers. Not all planar rifters are evil, as the same methods that proved effective in slaying the celestial host are just as useful against the other planar forces. Okay, cool. So, now, having read that, I've got a few questions that I'm not willing to do the research for right now. Hell, maybe some of you can answer these questions in the comments below the video, yeah? Like, who is Sixeron? Are there any NPCs in the Pathfinder canon that are planar rifters? I wonder why they only want to use pieces of Abaddon. Tell me your thoughts on this. Now, to the meat and potatoes... We're going to start with Infused Grit, which is a supernatural ability. Each day, when a planar rifter recovers grit, he can attune his grit pool to one of the following subtypes. Air, chaotic, earth, evil, fire, good, lawful, or water. Now, I'm just going to assume the water was actually supposed to be cool, and the air was supposed to be lightning, but... It's not my job to tell them what they meant. Carrying on, whenever he is on a plane that has an alignment or elemental trait, he can switch his attunement to match one of that plane's traits as a standard action. After reducing an outsider to zero hit points or below, he can switch his attunement to match one of that outsider's subtypes as a free action. He regains grit as normal from critical hits, but killing blows replenish his grit pool only if the target is an outsider. This alters grit. So, it took me a few rereads to understand how this is used. 
because it can't be as bad as it it sounds, right? Like fire, fire. Okay, so let's say you land on the elemental plane of fire. You can use your first standard action to attune to that plane. So in this instance, you are now attuned to fire. If you kill something that is an outsider, in general as a subtype, then you can get a point of grit back. Remember this example. We will be using this one quite a bit. Now, let's talk about your deeds. A planar rifter gains the following deeds. Infused bullet as a supernatural ability. At first level, a planar rifter's bullets carry the essence of a plane to which his grit pool is attuned, striking true against creatures that shrink from that plane's nature. As long as he has at least one point in his grit pool, he gains the following benefits. If he infuses his bullets with an alignment, his bullet damage counts as that alignment for the purpose of overcoming DR. If he infuses his bullets with an element, half of his bullet's damage changes to an energy type determined by the element infused. Acid for earth, cold for water, electricity for air, or fire for fire. This deed replaces the dead-eyed deed. Okay, so there's a bit to unpack here. Using our wary traveler, let's call him Mick. While on the plane of fire, Mick attunes to fire, and now his bullets do half fire damage. Mick is a medium human, so his revolver does 1d8 at this point. He rolls a 6, so 3 of his damage is fire, and 3 is non-magical piercing. How useful would this shot be against your average resident of the plane of fire? Let's look at Mr. Medium Fire Elemental here. Yeah, that, that's, that's lining up just, just as I thought. He is immune, so effectively the fire damage won't actually do anything with the residents here. Um, as of right now, this is absolutely not worth the swap for Deadeye. Let's see if this ability gets any better with age. Planar Surge, another supernatural ability. At 7th level, a planar rifter can spend one grit point as a swift action to change the attunement of his grit pool to any alignment or element. This new attunement remains for one minute, after which time the grit pool becomes unattuned. So now Rick, I mean Mick, can spend a grit point while on the plane of fire, and Mick can change his attunement to cold for a minute, using his revolver to do cold damage for 1d8 damage. This time Mick rolls an 8, so that's 4 piercing and 4 cold, plus 50% cold damage due to a vulnerability. At this time, Mick should have at least a bab of plus seven, so he can make two shots this round, squeezing out a bit more damage possibly. This comes in handy a bit more outside of the fire plane, if only Mick could find a way out. Um, by the way, this isn't worth the dead shot deed either, in my opinion. I just wanna point this out. I wanna be very concise and clear about this. Mm -mm. But this deed replaces the dead shot deed. Next up, we've got Breaching Shot, which is another supernatural ability. At 15th level, a planar rifter can fire bullets with such precision that he tears temporary rifts between planes. As a standard action, he can spend three grit points to shoot at a location within his firearm's first range increment and tear a 10-foot radius portal into a plane of his choice. The rift leads to a random location on the plane that is between 5 and 500 miles from his intended destination as plane shift. So basically roll 5D100s and see how many miles away you are. Yeah, um, The rift remains open for one minute during which time any number of willing creatures can pass through. It's a one-way rift, and it is insufficiently stable to reveal details about the environment on the other side. Okay, finally, it's time to get your plane hopping on. Mick, 
tired of this horrible fire plane. Aims his gun at a wall and uses three grit to create a portal for his team. They can't see where they will land, but at least it's not here. It may not be the best option while running away from an enemy due to the portal remaining open for a whole minute. But if he can time it well enough, it might be worth it. Now, let's say Mick has a, a pretty decent team, okay? He has a, a Syrinx Bard teammate uh, coupled with a Brute Vigilante Cat Person teammate. And they can all step through the portal, right? Uh, exploring the planar sphere, um, tuning forks between all the planes in order to make money for everybody that uses plane shift, right? Um, which could make for quite the adventure, I think. Um, by the way, this ability, completely worth the trade for Menacing Shot, in my opinion. This deed does replace the Menacing Shot deed, by the way, just in case you were wondering why I keep mentioning stuff like that. Next up, we've got Banishing Shot. At 19th level, whenever a planar rifter confirms a critical hit against an extra planar target, he can spend one grit to deal normal damage. And the target must succeed at a will saving throw with a DC equal to 20 plus the planar rifter's wisdom modifier. On a failed saving throw, the target is returned to its original plane as per the banishment spell. I like to think this ability would be well worth it in a campaign where you are defending your plane from an attacking host of either angels or demons or air elementals and when you shoot the enemies you're yelling go home ball it puts a smile on my face mechanically you're behind the wizard the sorcerer the cleric the summoner and the bard with this ability but i mean if if you are all trying to send the devil himself back to hell why not let the gunslinger be the one to do it why not zoidberg this deed replaces the Death's Shot deed. What? You thought that was it? Don't worry. There's more in store for Mick. Planar Resistance, which is a supernatural ability. At second level, when a planar rifter infuses his grit with the essence of a plane, he gains protection against that plane's dangers. If he attunes his grit pull to chaos, good, evil, or law, he gains resistance to magical effects that deal damage based on the chosen alignment, such as Holy Smite, Order's Wrath, a Paladin Smite Evil Attack, or an Unholy Weapon. If he attunes his Grit Pull to Earth, Air, Fire, or Water, he gains protection against the energy type associated with that element. See Infused Bullet on page 6. He reduces the amount of damage taken from attacks of the chosen type by two points per gunslinger level. This replaces Nimble. Now, keep in mind, this is back at level two. Mick is still on the plane of fire, so he is ignoring four points of fire damage per attack that connects with him. It's not much, but by level 15, that should give him plenty of space to keep safe when traveling into the nine hells. Because if you can plane hop, Eventually, you'll go to hell to save someone. That's just the cost of being awesome. Good job, Mick. Finally, we've got Planar Strike. At 5th level, as long as he has at least one point in his grit pool, a Planar Rifter's weapon attack deals an extra 1d6 points of damage of the same damage type reduced by his Planar Resistance. Aligned damage harms only creatures of an opposed alignment. At 13th level, this damage increases to 2d6. This replaces gun training. Well, we couldn't just leave on a good note, could we? We're going to do extra damage to enemies that are immune to the damage we are doing. I hope your GM is having the planes under attack by opposing planes, maybe let there at least be a chance that you can be useful. Not worth the trade for gun training. Not even a little bit. So, let's talk about my feelings for this archetype. I like the idea of it. My main problem is, your GM will be building a lot of their game around your archetype. This isn't a bad thing, but I have a feeling most GMs will be shaking their heads in frustration. If I knew I was running a game 
from levels 1 to 20 and a player wanted this, I would try to talk with them about this to understand what they want. And if it's to travel across dimensions with a portal gun of some kind, I would tell them I can just give it to them at level 15. Maybe they have a whole entire backstory where every mission they get a new piece that's important to make this dimensional vehicle or gun or whatever so that way just there are entirely too many pitfalls for this archetype is what I'm saying this might be good for an NPC to help the players get from plane to plane and for the final suicide mission the planar rifter has to be able to remain behind to ensure the heroes make it to the final boss then that's the best way to aim your players where you want then maybe after that climactic boss fight where you and your party saves the world, the planar rifter shows up at the victory party and you all celebrate on the plane of rad parties and you all live happily ever after. That seems legit. Now, if you've played a planar rifter all the way up to level 20 and enjoyed it or used it or hated it, Please let me know in the comments. I've wanted to play this archetype for a while, but every time I read this, I can't help but wonder why would anyone subjugate themselves to this level of misery? Just take a dip into Gunslinger, then do the rest in the travel domain and be a cleric. You'll get Plane Shift at 12th level. So um, now that I'm done ranting, I'm going to give this archetype a 3 out of 10. It's got good flavor, but the mechanics are weak and actually pretty useless. I, I hate, I think, everything about this archetype. It takes away almost entirely all of the things that make the gunslinger fun to play. The only thing you get that's fun in my head anyways is gonna be the, uh, the ability to travel from dimension to dimension or, or plane to plane or however you wanna play. Um, but that's, that's my opinion and hopefully uh, my GM in my next game that I play will let me do something like that. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you want more from Pathfinder B-Sides. If you want to see me play games with my friends, come check us out over on SCD Play Games, where I try to play games with Platonic D and Co. Um, lately, we've been enjoying Valheim, so, you know, that that's pretty fun. Um, also, come join us in the Discord. Put Professor Matty Balls to work on making an accidentally OP character for you, or... Come and argue with our resident rules lawyer slash video editor. By the way, Stanos, good job. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, he enjoys a good challenge to archaic rules. Either way, thanks for joining us today, and keep gaming.